All right, so in the other one, in the other video, we create our, well, we didn't create our own feature, but we use Java's features and uh, thread pools to create an example and understand what's going on with the features. But in this video, we're going to go ahead and create two things. One, we're going to create our own API that's going to generate a feature. Two, we're going to create a feature that's going to be a part of the API. So let's go ahead, create a package. Features, call it that, I guess. Um, all right. So let's let's first create our own feature. And um, so I'm 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 going to create in a way that it's going to allow a task to set the value inside the feature. Um, this has been many benefits. If, even if the task generates a value, you can just set the value. Even if the value comes from somewhere else, it can still be set in the, set in the future itself. So let's just go ahead and create it. It's going to call, we're going to call it settable future. Okay. Implants future. And, all right. Okay. Hmm. Keep forgetting to zoom in. All right. Well, I didn't do much yet. Um, so we're going to create a class, settle feature, that implants feature, and then yeah. So let's go ahead. All right. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to do a read-write lock. So why am I using a read-write lock? For two reasons. Number one. When you pull for data, meaning calling is done or get, um, you're just reading a value. So you don't need to create one lock that's going to block all read values. Multiple threads can have access to one feature, and that's perfectly fine. Um, and we want to generate a new lock for each thread that's accessing it for all the other threads that are that may or may not set the value. They're going to have their own uh, uh, write lock which will only allow one thread to have access and uh, write the value. But multiple threads can read it. And another thing is, um, it allows, so while you're writing it, you cannot also read it at the same time. Does that make sense? So it will, it will have that behavior for us uh, already in place. So let's, how should we create? Hmm, create a private um, constructor first. I don't know how read write locks are generated. Okay. Yeah, I feel like that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and look up how read write locks are actually instantiated. I don't remember. Alright, so um I just remember the read write lock is an interface and the actual implementation is called reentrant read write lock, which is the actual read um, read write lock with the behavior that I just mentioned. Um because read write locks can have different behaviors also. Maybe, maybe you want to limit the thread count for a writers or, or readers, or you want to have other kind of lock, specific logic around it. Um, that's why it's an interface itself, but reentrant lock will have the exact behavior I just mentioned. So let me use a reentrant lock. Reentrant read write lock, basically. And how it works is basically, I mean, in terms of the API that's provided, um, so let's, let's go and work with getters first, or pollers, let's call them. So it is done, will be done around, it's going to be a logic around the object itself. So let's create our object. object. So if, if the object is set, meaning the generation or set is complete, the is done will return true, right? So let's do this. Read right lock, read lock, lock. If Try if this object is no turn false. Well, actually, let me do this return this object. No, finally, do this.
Vlog, Vlog, Unlock. Okay. So what happens? What's going on here? So we are getting a read lock because we're reading the, uh, the object, the current state of the object. And uh, if it's null, we return actually if it's null. If it's null, it returns true, which is done true, and then it's wrong here. So if it's not null, return true. If it is null, then we return false. So we'll have the same logic here. Again with the read lock. Read lock lock. Right. And the reason I'm doing try block is that because I want to unlock it in the finally method. Otherwise there's no way of doing it after the return method itself. This is something uh, very cool about Java that I like. Return. Oops. So this is not going to do any kind of checks. This is going to return the current state of the object. Read write lock, read lock, unlock. I'm going to copy this. You know, I'm honestly not going to implement it because, um, yeah, honestly, it doesn't really matter. It's basically going to have the same logic with just, uh, it's just going to wait. Um, so we're just not going to do that. So we're missing one method, okay? We, this, it's a set of features, so we want to be able to set our object. So set we're going to get our lock. So I'm going to write lock. Finally, we write lock, write lock. All right, so th this has Get and set behaviors that we need. Um, so let me switch the button again. I'm going to keep it. Alright, so there's cancel and it is canceled. Um, I, I guess for this, we can um, have a flag. Initially, it will be obviously false. Um, I'm not sure if you want to implement the logic around it's cancelled. Um, again, depending on your task. Um, I guess we can just prevent any kind of setting if it's cancelled. So let's do this. If it is cancelled. Hmm. I think I'm going to put the cancel behind a write block also. Why am I doing that? Because while it's being set, it shouldn't be cancelled, and it shouldn't be set while it's being cancelled. Um, yeah, I think it makes sense. So let's do this. Basically, we're just going to put this around here. Catch. Exception E. If it's successful, it's going to return. I'm assuming it's successful. And false. Finally, oops, we need create a lot. All right, so let's quickly explain why I'm, what I'm doing. Um, since it's while you're canceling, you, you don't want. I don't want you to be able to set it. Or while you're setting it, I don't want to cancel to have any effect on it. Um, I'm going to put the cancel around the single write lock. Um, it's canceled is... Um, I, I'm going to put this behind a read lock. Um, I'm not sure if you need to.
Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to. Um, I think it's fine right now. We're not going to use this anyway, but um, yeah. So our, our, our set of feature is in place. Um, so let's go ahead and create an API that basically returns the set of feature. And then we'll, we'll consume that. Oh, wait a second. We, how do we create a set of feature? So let's create our API. Again, it's going to have the full size of one. And public. I mean, we can directly use that one, but that one returns a feature type we don't, we don't have control over, so we basically are you know, gonna wrap it around our own object. Well, not directly, we're, oh, you'll see. Uh, we'll accept the callable, I think. Doing this, I have no lot of JavaScript. Oh, All right, so we accept the task. Um, obviously, we don't we have we haven't submitted yet, but we're going to, um, and we're going to return a settled feature, and then. Uh, I know I said it was going to be a two-part video, but I think this is already long enough, so I'm going to do the rest in the third video. Thanks for watching.